In this session of Modeling Fundamentals, Part 17, we have a look at our user-defined objects that we can bring into our ProSteel environment. Now, these could be user shapes, which are very handy for any type of non-standard object that the database doesn't normally accommodate for. Partless parts, which are solids that are bought in from a supplier or a distributor, as well as naming conventions, which allow us to edit a database object, like a UB or a SHS, RHS. So we'll kick off with a user shape. User shapes work just like a normal shape does. If we go to the ProSteel directory, into the shapes, or shape insertion, instead of inserting a standard object, we could insert, there's two different types, we can insert roof wall shapes and user shapes, but both work exactly the same. Um, it's just obviously one works better with cladding. Uh, the user shapes, people have created them in the past and given them to Bentley, so Bentley have supplied them as part of the build, so you can see in here there's already a fairly extensive database in here of user shapes. The, the, the problem is that none of it's particularly useful in the Australian environment. And it's the same with the roof and wall shapes. Um, there's been a lot of stuff supplied to Bentley and Bentley have put it into the build. Now, to be honest with you, because we don't use much of this stuff, let me show you where to find this stuff so we can tidy these up. So the stuff that's in here is the stuff we want. All right, so this is the Bentley root directory for pro structures. Now this will vary at the moment. I'm working on select series eight, but it will vary year after year. We want to go to the data folder and you can see we've got user shapes and roof and wall. If we go into those folders, you can see here are our user shape directory. So to be honest with you, this is what I normally do in a new build is I select all the ones that do not pertain to my build and I get rid of them. I do the same with um, not only the user shapes, but I go and tidy up the roof wall as well. Okay. Um, once that's tidied up, that allows me to put any of the new stuff in that I want. And that is, those folders can be copied from version to version to version from then on. So we're going to switch out to an example. So where do we get our, our objects from? We can create them manually, or a lot of suppliers actually supply a profile for us that we can, that we can sort of insert and, and then work with. So I, I've just picked a random object here. Let, let's go for a gutter. So I'm going to go for a shear line gutter, just, just to give you an example. Now, quite often, um, people like Lysart will offer additional technical information like CAD drawings. So if you kind of have a fossic through here, quite often you'll find where they'll, they'll, they'll supply CAD drawings for us. So here's the technical information on the gutter. And if you keep scrolling down, we've got our downloads here. So we have ones for not only MicroStation, but AutoCAD, etc. It doesn't matter. We've got the power product. It will accept AutoCAD drawings as well as MicroStation drawings. So it doesn't really matter. But in this instance, let's go for the MicroStation one. Once we've downloaded that, there's a couple of different methods. I could insert it. I could um, copy paste. There's several different ways that I could bring this in here. But in this instance here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you how to reference an object in, because referencing is pretty neat in the MicroStation environment. So I'm just going to switch out to the wireframe mode, and here's the references up here on the top line. Okay, by selecting it, I can insert or attach a new reference. So reference is just a lot like uh, XREFs. So here's my uh, Lysart download, and just leave the settings globally. There's nothing to set here, and OK that in. And we're just going to have a look at it when it comes in and make adjustments then. So you can see here, in a lot of instances, some of the suppliers might not get their scales right. This one's really big. So I adjust my scales for this particular reference just here. And I, I know from experience this one is 1 is to 1,000 will take it down to the right size for me and, and sort of drop it here. So by default, it's going to insert at 0, 0, 
which is here and I, I want to move this reference so I'm just going to move that out and just bring it over to space here so I can work on it. Now the neat thing about MicroStation um, compared to AutoCAD is this reference here or XREF in AutoCAD I can actually copy this out of a reference into this particular model so that now is the line work in this model which is really cool so I can come back to the reference I will and delete that particular reference because I can't modify a reference but I can copy it and now this is just line work here in this particular model. Now again when you're getting stuff from different suppliers you might get um, the, in this particular instance this is a cell or a block. Okay so um, sometimes it'll come as a polyline sometimes it'll come as a block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and really I want to blow up the shared cells even though I've ticked on multi-line I'm going to um, I'm going to go for shared cells and drop it or explode it. So you can see it's just individual bits of line now. And what I want to do is we are going to go and we're going to join all these together. Because it's not going to be a complete link, we're going to create a complex chain, which is kind of like an open polyline. Now you can see in the settings here, I've got it set as automatic. You have automatic or manual. I like automatic with this because what it does is it just once you accept it, pick a, a bit and, and accept it, it's just going to run around and it's going to link everything together, which is really cool. All right. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go to modify and we want to move parallel, which is uh, another term for offset. So we're going to move parallel. Um, the distance is about 0.4, I think 0.42 is the gutter thickness. So we're going to offset that in. You can see we've got a double line there now. I just need to link up the open ends here. So I'm just going to create either a line or a smart line. So it doesn't matter which one because we're going to join it all up in a second. So we'll link these two together. Okay, and we're going to go back and instead of creating a complex chain, we're going to create a complex shape. Now this means is this is the same as a closed polyline. So again, I'm going to be I'm going to keep it as automatic. It works a little bit differently this time. I'm going to have to accept it each time, accept, 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 and it will just keep finding the next section closest to it and linking it all together. I've just got to keep going, accept, accept, accept. Okay. Once it hits the one I've already done, it will link all that up and close it for me. Okay. So if I click on this, you can see that is now a complex shape or closed polyline, however you want to think of it. All right. From here, now we want to move to it's time to tell ProStructures that or ProSteel that I would like to make this now a new shape. All right, a user shape. So the user shape is under ProStructures Tasks W5 and you can see that I've got user shapes, roof wall panels, etc. So under our user shapes, there's one there that I left when I deleted everything. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a catalog. Think of a catalog like a folder. I'm going to create a folder. Within the folder, which will be called Lysart, as an example, I'm going to put my user shapes. So I'm going to right click on the folder and I'm going to create an entry which is create a user shape. All right, and I'm going to call the entry shear line gutter. Okay, something that I'm going to um, know what it is and understand what it is in two years' time or something like that. So I'm just going to copy that name because I need to paste it again later. Now I right click again, I get a new entry here. I always create a normal resolution shape. And it's going to prompt me for entries. Um, if I have an inner polyline, now is the time to choose your inner polylines if I've got something hollow. There's no real need either to define midpoints or, or insertion points because ProSteel will pick them itself. Here I paste that name back in that I copied 
and don't forget to set the material grade so it comes out correctly on our material list. I'm pretty sure that gutters are the G450Z350. Everything else should be okay. It'll establish its own weight. It's just saying it's going to write that new data into that entry, which is okay, and accept that. At this point here, we're finished. Okay, we, we just we we could delete that polyline or, or or the closed shape if we want to. And if we go to our Pro Steel standard user shapes. You'll see that our entry is in here now, and ProSteel has put in the entry points as uh, all by itself, and in our object goes, just like a normal shape would. Now I've just noticed um, in here, I've just turned this back, um, graphically that hasn't quite come out right, that's absolutely fine, um, that'll be my user error in creating in this video. Now notice how this top corner, that is normally rounded. Let's fix that up right now. So go to the Pro Steel properties of this, go to Layout in General Data, and the edges inside are the default to keep the graphics really light in Pro Steel. If you turn on with arcs, it will get all the curves and everything that the the object will normally show. It's it's there to preserve the um, the graphics and and to keep your um, I mean keep your model size very very small so only turn the curves on if you absolutely need them. Now other standards that that can be uh, from suppliers are 3D solids and exactly the same methodology we go to the supplier and we download it we can reference it in the solid so I've got a drive motor here that I can bring in it will come in as a reference. Again, I could insert it or use references. I really like references, so I use those guys. I'm going to move the reference over here, so get it away from everything. And exactly the same as what I did last time with the user shapes, is I will copy out of the reference into the model. Okay, so that it's just, it's, a, it's essentially cleansed as it comes through as well. So this is just a 3D solid that has been supplied by a supplier of a drive motor. Now a couple of things that um, to be aware of. The holes that you can see, I can't match drill. All right? I can snap to the center and I can drill a pro steel object through there and then I can bolt using two, the bolting two point method. All right, but, but you can't match drill. So as long as you're aware of that, um, it, it's still a very easy workaround for you. Okay, now I want this to come out into drawings and I want it to come out into the part lists. So, you know, at the moment it's just a, uh, you know, a dumb block or a cell. And the way I get this to come out is I use create part list element. And that tells ProSteel I want to use this in my drawings and I want to use it in my part list. So it will come up with tag information at which point you can put any of the information in here that you want to put in. Um, 1000 kilowatt drive motor. I'm not going to worry about a material grade, but you know, if you had something, you could put a material grade in there. You could also put in your own user defined length and width and height and weight. All right, it, it, it doesn't know what this stuff is. Finally, make sure if you want it in a part list, we tick on in part list. And it's as simple as that. All right, that will now come out in the drawings and it will be available in our part list information as you can see here if you want to get into the part list stuff you just treat it exactly like you would treat a normal pro steel object our final object for this session is our naming conventions now we've got to start off with our standard pro steel shapes from our from our shape insertion here so i'm just going to pick uh, an rhs for this uh, example it can be any size but naming conventions are based on object types. In this instance, it's an RHS. The size doesn't matter. So to work out how we can modify this with a naming convention, we're going to navigate our way to ProSteel options. Now there's two ways to get in here. I can go to the Pro Structures menu, Project and ProSteel options, or alternatively, I can hold down the right mouse button 
and it's second from the top pro structures options there okay now where we want to be is we want to be in shapes you'll see there's a little plus over here on the left and we want to go down to naming conventions what we'll see here is you'll see all the different object types that we can have whether it's square bar or flat or round bar in particular we've got rectangular hollow and you can see here we've got RR width by height by thickness so if I remember that and I come back into my object I go to the pro still properties of it and we want to edit the shape type and we put in the naming description which was RR width by height by thickness okay just tick OK and it will update there we go now this is really useful if you've just got these little one-off things it just responds like your normal shape would now the only other piece of just advice that I can give you is the data is going to come out exactly how we put it in so you know in this instance in keeping with everything else that we standard that we might have put in the job we might want to change the name just so that everything else lines up and matches